Look at that. This is Volkswagen's new electric hot hatch, the new ID3 GTX. So this new performance version is kind of the electric GTI in the current portfolio. But this video will also be about all the changes that are coming to the ID3. Another facelift or update here with interior changes and even to the battery and to the packaging. So also relevant for all ID3 customers existing or in the future. And everything of that is Thomas Naudegefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the GTX front, which is sporter here in the lower part. So here we have this kind of wide mesh structure and this is the King's red color also taken from a past GTI color also to have this you know GTI resemblance. Then you can see here the daytime running light also with this nice illumination in or outside the main headlamp unit. In the side profile 4 meters 26 or 168 inches is the normal length. Difference is here that you have new wheel design and 20 inch. You can see here these are also the 20 inch wheels and they are standard for the GTX. You can also get one that are completely black for an even more sinister look. Then we have here a black contrasting roof that fits very well to the King's red color. And there are also battery changes here because this one here now gets two kilowatt hours net more. So they move from 77 to 79 kilowatt hours net. The GTX always gets big battery, but also if you go for the normal Pro S version, then it will also be the bigger battery. In the rear here, you can see a nice three-dimensional signature for the tail lamps. In the lower part, once again, a black contrast. So I think the design overall, yeah, it works very well. You get, of course, here another GTX batch. And yeah, there's of course more power. There is a normal version and a GTX performance version. However, they are both rear wheel drive. So no all wheel drive. They get the whole power at the rear axle. So you have the normal ID3 GTX, 286 horsepower, six seconds in the acceleration figure and 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles an hour top speed. That's already quicker than the model so far, than the non-GTX model. And then you get the ID3 GTX performance version with 326 horsepower, strongest electric motor by Volkswagen so far. That one at 5.6 seconds in the acceleration figure and even at 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour top speed. This is then something for the German Autobahn, right? So we'll test that one at the later stage, of course, for you. And then in the performance trim, it's actually almost two seconds quicker than the version that was there before in the bigger horsepower output. Here the so-called IQ Lite is their brand name for the Matrix LED. Usually it would be an option here for the GTX model. It is standard equipment as well. Hey, another light feature we have right here, these additional vertical lights here in the lower part, also a special GTX feature. These are running when the main headlamp unit is also running. Turning indicators in the front, here, look at that. Really nice how it replaces the lower part of the daytime running light, isn't it? And in the rear, you have it here also cascading if you once again have the IQ light, the optional matrix LED. More standard features for the GTX here, tinted windows in the rear for more sinister look and maybe also sun protection. And then the tires here, these are two 15 mil tires. These are standard for the normal GTX version here and the performance version even gets 235 mil. So that's actually where you can see from the outside if you read the tires if you have the ID3 GTX or the ID3 GTX performance. So this is not the performance version but the visual part is actually all the same. Interesting also as for the suspension, this is also a new change. So you either get the base suspension which is already a little bit sportier in the setup than the normal model and then optional DCC that's also nothing unusual but here it's a special sports DCC a new application and it's not only sport here but more comfortable at the same time they say we're going to test that for you of course later if that's also true the DCC is always the adaptive suspension and you can set it really according to the driving modes and then it rules in a certain spectrum you know from comfort to sportiness and you can actually set this spectrum and inside this spectrum it then also adapts accordingly. Recharging has a 175 kilowatt DC peak and that means 26 minutes 10 to 80 percent state of charge and 
preconditioning is also possible. As for efficiency and range, the last time we've been driving an ID3 outside in summertime, we had really ideal conditions and then we could score some 16 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, so it's close to 4 miles per kilowatt hour. And with the new updated big battery, that would mean something close to 500 kilometers or 300 miles of rearward range. If you then consider maybe a little bit more performance driving, maybe a little bit more high speed driving, you know this also goes fast on the autobahn now, and also maybe winter time, then maybe a worse calculation would be around 400 kilometers, 250 miles, and then effectively probably something in between, but overall it's actually quite decent. Before we get to the interior now, very important update. First of all, well, let me show you this. <laughs> This is here the VW logo that stays upright, Rolls-Royce style. Yeah, but that was actually not the thing I wanted to talk about. Here, they made a stronger rear axle for the GTX version, but also the Pro S version with the bigger battery will profit from that because so far they had a weight problem. Means if you went for the bigger battery, you could not get panoramic roof, five seater, so the through bench and the bicycle rack. That was only possible in combination with the smaller battery because of weight issues. Now with a stronger rear axle, we have here five seats. So also a middle seat where you can actually sit on. That's the one thing. Then there's now panoramic roof, the glass roof available. And we don't have one here at this moment, but you can then also install here for the GTX or the Pro S version, the, you know, like this towing hook, which is not a towing hook, but you can put then the bicycle rack on there. So very important upgrade coming with the GTX, but also profiting then from the non-GTX version. This is the key fob, high gloss black. I don't like it, honestly. Do you? Tell me in the comments. And what is this for? Hmm, does it look familiar? I'll soon tell you. Then the door closing sound. Hmm, that is very solid. Like that, inside of the doors. So with the facet that came before, they updated these materials. So this is then here, soft touch. Also then now for the GTX model, you have here the red contrast stitches. Also softer here for your elbow. High gloss black, once again, is not my favorite. And also I want real stuff here. I mean, this is still real, this button here. But then for example, here you click to control the rear windows to only have two buttons. Some love that solution, some find it actually better. I found it worse, um, yeah, but what do you think? Then interior here, oh, let me just brush the microfiber first. <laughs> so first of all, these seats here, either with fabric on the inside, GTX specific, red contrast stitching, this one is the option, Ergo Active Seat with microfiber. It looks really fancy, and also here with this integrated head restraint, GTX badge, that looks cool, but is it also comfortable? Let's find out. And here the steering wheel, red contour stitches as well. Illuminated hashtag capacitive BS buttons, right and left. It looks cool, but to control it, we know it already, the rear buttons are better. But Volkswagen have understood us and also here the customer feedback that we want the real buttons and turning jocks and so on back. So with very new, all new models coming up, they will go back to real buttons and stuff. This one, by the way, here, you put in the seat belt holder for studio shootings that, for example, sometimes you get like this warning, hey, someone hasn't put a seat belt on, so you can just put it in there and then you don't get this warning. Of course, don't um, yeah, use it for any other thing besides studio shooting, please. Then sitting here on the seat, it has a really comfortable sports seat with a microfiber. And then when we put it in the lowest position here with the panoramic roof to the side, there's headroom and to the middle even more with 189 or six foot two. Steering wheel with a manual adjustment up and down, in and out. And you can see here also the GTX badge in the lower part. And wait a minute. Look at that. So there is this small digital instrument, but then the gear shift was here so far. Now updated and taken from the ID7 is that the gear shift is now here for drive and reverse. So this is another update, cleans up everything here. And yeah, that also enables a bigger display. Now it, to be exact, it's 129 but we just say 13 inch, so an inch larger than before. And this is also standard then for all the ID3 models. 
interior cockpit overview. This is here, by the way, also soft touch and the red contrast stitches and so on. And here, these sliders for the temperature unit. Um, yeah, you can also turn off these sounds. So these are also illuminated now. And then steering wheel heating, for example, you can access right here. But as I said, with you get some kind of feedback here. But yeah, it's better when it's really, you know, to be pressed in there. Most important thing first, deactivate that touchscreen tone feedback. Now we can take a tour together. You have this main menu, this is new, and also this quick access here. So when you have Apple CarPlay activated or so, you also have a symbol in the top part there and they can easily access it. Here, for example, also like the seat options, you can swipe this one down for some favorites of her brightness of the screen. In the lower part, the seat heating stays. That could be a little bit more responsive though. Or you have this main menu here that is also possible. These are the vehicle settings here. For example, the charging settings. They can also set your maximum charging limit to maybe like be a little bit more gentle to the battery and so on. And this is also where you can, for example, start the battery heating. This is new to the ID3. Here, this is in the preconditioning for the fast charge so you don't have to go to the GPS and pick a charging station you can also click that here manually for the preheating that's very good and useful to have for EV customers definitely so you see they definitely made some steps forward here voice input is also interesting they reworked that uh, they call it Ida or Ida and then you also see this front interaction bar appearing and it takes also data from Wikipedia, for example, and in the future also from ChatGPT when you ask something about, like, you know, you're driving somewhere we here on Majorca, for example. Tell me something about Majorca. Here is what I found on Wikipedia in the article. Yorka. Mallorca, or Mallorca, is the largest island of the Balearic Islands which are part of Spain, and the seventh largest. Okay, I think we can read the article later, but you see here, in this case, it took info from uh, Wikipedia, and in the future it will also be possible to get some chat GPT info, and um, you know, that to just be a little more flexible when driving to get some information, or maybe even talk to chat GPT. Well, I would rather talk to the passenger, right? Digital instruments, they are basically unchanged. You can change something of the view, but the main focus is just to see the speed. And you can also get a head-up display. Oh, I forgot that cloth towel there. Why is it in the frame now? Yeah, we cleaned the car before. <laughs> Sorry about that. Then middle console here in the front. There's some storage here. And we have adaptive cup holders. Important to have. I mean, even some premium cars don't have that meanwhile. But then here, this is like this, you know, strange rubber material. This inductive charging bed behind this, not the best solution I feel. But a lot of space right here with two USB-C chargers. There's our, um, you know, mm. not allowed in public spaces uh, seat belt faker. You can also put this one out, for example. And what's also cool here with these seats, you have these armrests here and they are also adjustable in the height. Yeah, and then about the panoramic roof. Look at that. So this is then finally also available and what you can also see is, there we go, ah, yeah, swipe it backward. So there's the separate shade available here. You can close like that. There is this slider here in the front. I'm not the biggest fan of these sliders here. They are always, you know, they don't give you real feedback. So, yeah, but maybe I'm too much of an old school guy meanwhile as well. Or what do you think about this? So it's good to have a real shade. And yeah, the most important thing is that now even for a bigger battery version, we can get the panoramic roof and yay! I can also sit here in the middle part as a fifth tall adult. Well, yeah, it maybe closely fits or something. But the thing is that here you will always have then the through bench and there's not this strange hole here. And indeed you have here the third seat belt indicating that you can actually use it here. Couplers, they are not adaptive though. This is the ski hatch, so that's possible. And the seating comfort in general on the outside parts is you know, actually quite good. You see also for tall adults, it works with the leg room and the headroom here with the panoramic roof. So it ends right here, but then you have, you know, some space above that. So that works. The usage of space is quite good. What about the inside? 
interior here on the doors. I mean, yeah, it's not the super highest premium segment. This is a hard pack. I think we can live with that here. We have the option Harman Kardon sound system and some more contrast stitches. Luggage capacity, 385 liters up to 1,270 liters. We always have these facts and figures, by the way, also in the video description and in the pinned comment that you can just check these facts, maybe if you want to do that later or parallel and so on. Here, manual hatch, and then luggage fits well, a meter or 40 inches in width. The length is about 78 centimeters, 31 inches. Oh, by the way, the, did you hear that actually? Let's go back here. With, like the, the opening and, dock and, and closing sound of the hatch. And just here when I flip the logo, I mean, it does make some satisfying sounds, so I like that quality-wise. And let's get this out because underneath you have some space, like in this lower floor for the charging cable, for example. And you can also take out this whole thing that would also be possible. And underneath that one, you have then, for example, this thing here, the subwoofer, if you have the optional sound system, for example, and then, you know, like uh, this, 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 you know, towing hook for not towing trailers, but being towed, for example. Hopefully not, but yeah, that's the, the cable solution because we don't have a front. And to fold the thing here, I mean, the ski hatch <laughs> also works from here, but you have to unleash it from the other side as well. And then we have to go around here for the seats, like this, one third, and, uh, there we go, <laughs> for the two-third for you. Is there a frunk or not? Yeah, maybe you already know if you have one. There is no frunk, you can fill the wiper fluid in there. By the way, you hear the, you know, the, the ignition running here for the vent and so on, because the AC is running then when we have the ignition on. Well, so far, this is Volkswagen's electric GTI, but there's already the next one in the planning, which is supposed to be even closer design-wise to past GTI models and will be front-wheel driven. And I think that storm is picking up, you know? <laughs> I think this video you should check out right now.